welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video we continue talking about Stream.io and in particular we're going to look at some of the details of serialization. So in the last video we looked at how we could use default serialization by making our shape class extend serializable. It had the ability to be written out using an object output stream and then read back in using an object input stream. And in fact, we happen to write out an array of these things. Turns out that array is serializable, uh, as are the other collections that are in the skull library. So if you happen to have those, you can serialize them out. Um, we saw some of the challenges that you can have with this. The fact that when we read things in, they are of a generic type, uh, any ref. And so we have to do something to make sure that we get back the, the type that we want so that we can deal with it. We also saw a minor problem where I made changes to the code and then I tried to read things back in and it didn't work. And so in this video, I want to talk about two details, or I guess three details of, of serialization, um, just to hit on them briefly. Because they, it turns out if you're going to be doing much serialization, they are important. Okay. So the first of which is that every so often you will have situations where you don't want something to be serialized. Now in the case of our shape, everything that I have inside of here, I do want to have serialized. Uh, in, in other words, when I save it, I want all of these things to be saved. I want the color to be saved, in the circle I want the radius, in the rectangle I want the width and the height. And the default serialization is going to, solve, is going to save all of those for me. <clears throat> But let's say that I had this inside of some GUI program. And in addition to these other things, I had something like this, uh, a properties panel. And so this is a new, let's go ahead and put a swing dot panel so I don't have to do an import. Uh, is that sufficient? OK, there we go. So I make a new panel. and. Who knows what goes inside of here? Okay. Uh, and this panel is going to allow people to to possibly adjust the width and the height. Maybe this should be inside of the, the mutable version. Um, this would be data. And right now, using the default serialization, this is going to be data that's also saved off. But this is a swing panel. It's not really fundamental to the rectangle itself. There's no reason why I should be saving this. This is something that should be recreated when I need it as I need it. Uh, and so most likely I'd have some some method in here def get prop panel and I could change this up so that the prop panel oops val uh, well okay let's go ahead and Oops, prop panel equals new. Okay, and so the get prop panel would return a just the prop panel. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit of ahead of myself on this. But I don't want to save this. Okay? Instead, I want to have it so that it is only used at runtime and maybe we create them at runtime. But how can I make it so that something which is stored in here isn't saved as part of the default serialization? And the answer to that is I put a tag on here of transient. So you can add, this is referred to as the metadata. It tells us something about uh, what's going on and it tells it to, to the compiler, to other tools. This says that when you do the serialization, prop panel should not be written out. Now, Turns out if you make something transient, almost inevitably it has to stop being a val and it has to be a var. And the reason for that is because, so when I save off a rectangle, it will save the width, the height, and the color. It will not save the prop panel, which then what happens when you load it back in? Well, it turns out the width, the height, and the color are loaded in as they're supposed to be, and the prop panel is initialized to the default value, which in this case is null. Okay, so that would cause problems in this code because then when something tries to get it, it's definitely going to get null. So instead, we would need to reconfigure our code just a little bit so that this would do something along the lines of 
if prop panel is null, then we do something like this is that up oh, and then this needs to be a var because we're doing an assignment to it uh, oh, and equals no okay so now my swing panel which I really didn't need to save off plus the swing panel is inevitably large it inevitably has a, a fair bit of data associated with it I don't need it Instead, we're going to create this, and probably this panel needs to have some layout inside of it and have, have labels and text fields so that we can adjust the width and the height and, and change, choose the color and whatnot, and none of that needs to be saved. Okay, And so that's the purpose of labeling things transient, but note that when you make things transient, you almost inevitably have to make this a var because when it loads it back in, it is going to set it to null. And so if you want it to be anything other than null, you have to, do, to, to include code like this which will initialize it in a lazy way. So it starts off as null and it will only give it a value when needed. So the transient is one of these tags that we can put on here which is significant to serialization. The other one was something that we saw uh, kind of in the last video where I made some changes to my rectangle and because of those changes I couldn't use the older version. And in fact right now, so if we come to serialization and I try to read this back in, even though the change that I made did not alter the saved format of the rectangle at all. I still have this problem here where it says that these serial version UIDs don't match. Okay. If you're going to be saving something for an extended period of time, you really have to be more cognizant of what you're doing and you need to set a serial version UID. Okay, So I'm going to add a tag. In, this tag was attached to this var declaration. This one, because it precedes the class, is associated with the entire class in general. And so if I come back to here and I uncomment those lines and I comment those lines and I run this, It resaves my file for me. So now let's swap this back over and make sure that I can read it back in. Okay, we're fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and comment out this. Now that change right there would have broken our save file earlier because it would have changed uh, because I took out some methods and I took out a value even though it happened to be transient. But now when I run this, it reads it in just fine. Okay. Because the serial version UIDs match. And that was because we forced the serial version UID to be 101. Which leads to the interesting question here of, well, what happens if there were some other data in here? Uh, val uh, equals 42. Okay, so I have this piece of data. I'll make it so that my two string prints that out as well, plus plus foo. Okay. Now this right here makes it look like every time I ever create a, a rectangle, it's going to have a value of 42 for foo, and and that's just how it's going to be. Uh, so what happens now? If I read this back in, foo is zero. On the other hand, if I create a rectangle here, so new, let's actually just print line out. Print line, new rectangle, five comma six comma color dot blue. And I run this. Because this new rectangle that I just made is 42, uh, or it, because it's new and the rectangle says to make foo equal to 42, we wind up getting a, a value of 42 printed here. The version that I had serialized out, I serialized out before I added foo. 
Now, without the serial version UID, adding foo would have caused it so that this would crash and it wouldn't read in properly. Because the serial version UID matches, it when it reads it in, it says, okay, width is, is, is reads in a value and, and it has the name width associated with it, so it puts that in width. Another one goes into height, another one goes into color, but it doesn't find anything to match foo, and so foo gets the default value, which is zero. So you do have to start being careful here. Uh, if instead of being a number, if this had been a string, uh, like that, and now we come back over here. Well, the default value for, for objects is null. Okay, and so you can run into some weird null pointer exceptions and stuff like that if you happen to change uh, the data that's stored in there, but you force the serial version UID. If you're going to add new data, you probably should update the serial version UID, which will, of course, invalidate all of your saved files. Uh, the book also goes into the kind of the next step up, which is you don't use the default serialization. Okay, so instead of having to deal with, uh, or instead of just using what they do to save stuff by default, you create your own way of saving things. And there are different reasons why you would want to do this. One of which, in fact, so another reason why you might make something transient. Uh, what if I were to put in here uh, equals new buffered image. Let's actually go ahead so I don't have to import java.awt.image.buffered image of uh, 100, 100. I'm not certain that zero is a valid value for that, but let's see if this runs. No, illegal argument, darn. Okay, so I will have to type in the whole thing. Copy, paste, dot. That's the one that I normally like to use. Okay, now if I go and what I want to demonstrate is not the loading, I want to demonstrate the saving. Okay, so we run this, boom, it crashes. Why did it crash? I mean, my rectangle is serializable, right? The rectangle is serializable, but if you actually want to serialize it, everything inside of it has to either be serializable or transient. In this case, buffered image, it turns out, is not serializable. So one way of dealing with that would be, of course, to make it transient. Okay. Now it doesn't save, and maybe that's okay. Maybe you can recreate it, but maybe you can't. Okay. Maybe you actually need to save off this image, in which case you would label this as transient, and then you would also override the default serialization and write out this buffered image in the way that you wanted to. Maybe you would write out two values, a width and a height, and then write out a whole bunch of ints for the get ARGBs, uh, or the get RGBs. I don't know, you'd, you'd have to think about how exactly you want to do it, but because buffered image, when they added this to the libraries, they decided not to make it serializable, you cannot have it inside of a serialized class. Uh, so you have to find some way around that. And obviously just making it transient gives you a step in the right direction, but you probably also need to, if you actually need to save the image, you need to look up how to do uh, custom serialization. And the book goes into that, but it's kind of an advanced topic. So we're not going to cover it here in the videos. So that takes you through kind of the, the details that you can get into with, with serialization of classes. Uh, we'll come back in the next video, and we will talk about how we can do serialization that's not the default serialization. In fact, not binary serialization at all. We'll look about how, at how we could go ahead and do our own custom serialization using XML.